thanks everyone for joining. It's certainly been an interesting start uh, to the week. Um, getting more interesting actually day by day. First you have the Fed, then you have China. What's going on? Well, we'll talk about it. I know one of you wants to talk about gold, wants me to look at gold, and I will do. Just uh, we'll we'll just, um, just bear with me now. Great. So I'm hoping that you can all see here or see my desktop now. Um, you should be able to, and uh, we will get going very shortly. Right. Uh, what is this? This is CAD Yen. That's probably not a cross that we're going to look at straight away. But what I do want to show you guys is uh, we'll start with the yen just to get a real sense of what's going on. So as I said, like you know, the background is or the fundamental backdrop at the moment is that we've got uh, obviously tapering fears in the US. We've also got um, some chi some fears from China now as well. Um, fears about China and its um, Fears about China and its uh, and its um, it, a potential um, for a a credit crunch there. Uh, big news, really. Um, you know, bit very big news. So, what's this doing? Uh, dollar yen, obviously, you know, massively, uh, but you know, very important. As you can see, um, let's just go back to the, sorry, the daily chart, and I'll just go through it with you. Uh, we had obviously fallen off. Then last week, post the Fed meeting, we rallied, and then since then, we've actually dropped back a bit. Now, this is significant where we are now. Currently, 97.01 is the uh, is pretty much the uh, the. 100-day moving average, uh, very important level. So we're at a key support level right now in dollar yen. If we get below there, it probably opens the way for a deeper decline. Let's just go on the shorter time frame to talk about that. Maybe even back to these lows here at 95. Um, you know, wh well, why isn't the, you know, why isn't uh, dollar yen rallying? I'm sure I hear you all cry. Uh, there's a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, obviously, we've seen stock markets do better and yields come back. So there's been dollar is quite it's quite hard to find the exact drivers because during this sell off so I'll go back to the daily chart during this sell off here dollar yen was following stock markets well right now this move out higher it was following yields so now that yields have come off that's taken the edge off there now this is one chart um, those of you who joined the forex.com webinar yesterday I actually held it but I think this is one chart that's uh, that's important and is the, the chart that's kind of directing everything. It's the 10-year Treasury yield. As you can see, it expanded huge increases in yields last week. And just even looking back on a 10-year, on a 12-month basis, um, the size of the candles are noticeably larger um, over the last kind of, you know, towards the end of last week than they have been in the past. However, one thing that we've got here, we've got a bit of a pattern here. When you see very long shadows on candlestick patterns, you have to wonder whether or not the market's trying to make a top. And right now, it looks like above 2.6%, we're getting a lot of sellers coming in. Because remember, the Federal Reserve did actually say, what they said last week was that, yes, um, you know, they, they will have to taper for sure. We always knew that. They weren't going to do this buying up of 85 billion a month um, indefinitely. They can't, not even the Fed can afford that. But I think what's, um, you know, they actually, what they said was is that the, 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 the pace of tapering um, and how it happens will be very dependent on the real economy. And what we do know is that the real economy is okay, but it's not going great guns yet. The, the unemployment rate is still too high for the Fed, etc., etc. So, you know, I think this was just a bit of realism coming back into the markets, hence why it's also triggered a bit of a, a, bit of a rebound in stock markets. Um, so this, to me, is the, is the most important chart. As I said, it's a 10-year bond yield. You can find it. Usually, you can kind of Google it and find a 10-year bond yield chart if you don't have it. Otherwise, you can always check our um, research. As re myself and my colleagues, particularly in the US, we do write a lot about it. So basically, what this, what this chart is telling us is that yields, um, uh, US bond yields, they've started to come back just a little bit right now, um, and that's helping uh, boost sentiment towards things like stocks, etc., etc. So you know, just a little bit of soothing going on in the markets. 
Um, so that is a uh, that's that's been positive stocks basically. Um, okay, someone mentioned about gold, and I'm going to look at gold straight straight away. And the reason why, of course, is because gold it's it's intricately linked in to this whole debate. Um, it's important. Uh, it's, it, it tends to be a, uh, what does it tend to be? It tends to be a hedge against the debasement of money and a hedge against inflation. Uh, what with the dollar rising and inflation remaining very low, there's little, there isn't too many reasons to buy gold right now. However, on the other side of that equation as well, we have physical demand for gold, right? People who want gold, jewelry, etc. And a lot of that was coming from China. If China's slowing down or there's a bit of a problem of a Lehman-like event in China, people won't be buying as much gold jewelry, um, not just in China and India too. Um, and that's going to be uh, that could be problematic. So, you know, this is the gold chart here, as you can see. Um, I hope you guys like the black charts. Do let me know. These are my Bloomberg charts, so that's why we're looking at them. But you could look at any gold chart. In fact, I've got a white one if you'd prefer. But let's stick with this one for now. Um, yesterday, we well and truly lost uh, that 1300 uh, handle there. As you can see, we are quite a way away now from our moving averages. Uh, let's just take a look at gold on the other chart. Just bear with me one moment because this will be quite useful for momentum indicators. They're a bit trickier to pull up on Bloomberg. Here we go. This is uh, this is gold, um, as you can see, um, a daily chart on gold, uh, torrid, torrid week last week, really did um, move in the exact opposite direction of the dollar yen, but it is finding a bit of a base there, if you can see, there looks like there's some kind of, you know, three nights after, after falling, um, there's a bit of a bit of a base going on, now this doesn't mean a reversal, and this certainly isn't a reversal candlestick pattern, um, as you, those of you who know candlesticks quite well, the reversals tend to be, um, you know the, the the engulfing candles, the haramis, the um, you know the hammers um, and the hangman patterns, etc. Um, these aren't any of them. Um, I would argue I, I, they are still very very small. And what we've seen in the past, just going through this. Going, just looking, um, casting our mind back a little bit um, for um, uh, gold. As you can see here, we have gone through periods whereby we've had very long candlesticks to the downside and then very short ones kind of moving sideways. So we could have a bit of a sideways move here. That's what this tells me. And also, as you can see, the market does react to oversold conditions in gold. So, for example, back in April, um, when gold, do you remember when gold had that 150-day sell-off, uh, $150 sell-off in, in about a day and about 24 hours? Um, largest sell-off for, uh, you know, many years, I think more than a century. Um, and then it started looking very, very oversold and we staged a recovery, even though really that recovery was a bit of a false recovery because we've now made a lower low um, from that. So, uh, so what we could see is, you know, you get these big moves in gold and then you kind of move sideways for a little bit and then you move lower again. So we do think there could be further downward potential for the gold price and actually find out where that potential lies. You've probably got to look at the weekly chart. Just bear with me one moment. Just going to draw a bit of a channel. That's not the best one. Let me just finish drawing it here. So as you can see here, we have actually seemingly held at channel support, weekly channel support, um, which comes in around about 1280, which is you know where we've bounced back a bit, a little bit today. Um, so right now, um, you know, what does this mean? Um, you know, we're still in a down down trend basically for, for all of 2013, um, it does mean that we could potentially push higher a little bit, recover a little bit, which moves with that whole kind of, you know, the market doesn't, you know, it likes to square itself up a little bit after um, gold and then kind of before we come back down again, which then gets us down to that 1220 level. Um, Fibonacci, Lila is looking at Fibonacci and we shall as well, Take, bear with me now. Um, let's look at it maybe on those... Let's look at it on the weekly. It's a bit of a wide one, but it could come in handy. Yeah, you've got the 61 point. Oh, no, you don't. Yeah. I see where you're going with that, with that level there. Um, 1248 to 51. Yeah, around that is a 61.8%, um, you know, retracement of the up move from uh, 20, uh, 
2010, is it? Yeah, it's made way to that high in 2011. Um, so that is going to be significant as well. So all around this level, that does also coincide with the bottom of that channel. It's in a sticky resistance zone, really, between 12.50 and 12.80. So it's no surprise that we're kind of moving sideways. And we could move sideways in a little bit of a, a, a sideways channel for a while. And as I said, like, you know, gold is no stranger to doing that. This is the weekly chart. We had one, two, three weeks sideways. One, two, three, four weeks sideways. Um, you know, th that's that's... That happens, um, and that's perfectly normal. I think you make a good point. Do look out for that 1250 to 1280 level as a key support zone. Remember as well, when you look at support, some people sit there and they think, oh, goodness, support. It can only be like, you know, one level. It has to be like 1286 or something. Actually, it's better to always look at supports, especially on big long-term charts like weekly charts, um, as a zone. Um, because obviously people draw lines in different ways, and they even draw Fibonacci slightly off from someone else, um, or slightly, you know, different angle or whatever to someone else. So um, think of it more as zones. So yes, Lalit, we are moving into a support zone for gold right now. Um, and if we get below 1250, uh, that would kind of negate that and could open the way to 1200, obviously, in the very short term, but also potentially back to that kind of, you know, 1100 level. Um, 1100, uh, there was, from a purely fundamental perspective, some people have been talking about how... Um, some people have been talking about how gold really needs to fall back to the to the gold needs to fall back to the um, you know level of uh, production or to its production cost around about eleven um, eleven fifty ish or eleven say ten to eleven fifty um, before it will be overdone. So there could be further downside there on gold, but right now it does look from a technical perspective as if we're moving sideways. But again, you know any kind of move back towards you know thirteen. 20, maybe even 30 and 50, uh, could be used for further selling interest. So, uh, so that's an interesting one. But again, draw your attention to this weekly RSI. It's looking very, very oversold. And even if I go to the daily, again, it's in that oversold territory. So it's kind of below the 20 level in the RSI, which is key. Okay. Uh, we also, of course, we need to look at a couple of things. Um, da -da -da -da. Let's take a look at this. Oh, I mentioned yen, and I just wanted to show you this. Um, the stickiness that we're seeing around the base of this Ichimoku cloud. I know some of you like clouds, some of you don't. Um, 12.48 is fake spot. Um, no, but okay, that sounds good. Uh, but basically, just look out for that whole area. It's a support zone. Um, you know, I think that um, you know, really with gold, if we get below, what we tend to see are big sharp moves lower. So if we were to fall below, kind of say 12.45, um, I think that would actually open the way to a much larger move lower below 1200. Um, so that's, that's our view there. Um, in terms of is there actually a, a support zone at 12.26, let's take a look at a very long-term chart. Um, you know, you'd be casting your mind back quite a long way. Um, oh, no, I don't want to do that. Bear with you one moment. You'd be going looking at the monthlies. Um, I'd say there's probably slightly better support there at kind of 11.80, actually, um, which... You know, it wouldn't be a uh, wouldn't be a terrible, um, you know, short term trend to bit to fly on if we were to get below 12.50. Um, okay. Uh, sorry, I don't know what, what I don't understand what you mean about 12.48 spot. Um, spot the spot gold price right now is trading at 12.85. So let's just, can we just leave gold for a moment, please? I feel like we've, we've done quite a lot of it. Um, and let's actually go into cable here. Um, as you can see, the reason why I'm using cable um, is that it's really been kind of more of a wallflower. There hasn't been too much fundamental fundamentals moving this. There's not been too much economic data. It's moved much more on the back of kind of price and overall risk sentiment, which actually makes it quite a refreshing thing to see because you're seeing it being kind of, you know, over these 
this is what, what's moving the price forward. And as you can see, down, 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 down. But again, basing and interesting enough, finding very, very good support at these levels. So what does that tell me on a kind of broader perspective? What it tells me is that you know the market is respecting um, so key key support levels. Um, so for example, you know in this one, the 153.15 level, 100-day moving average, and also the 153.85. The other thing I would point out to you is that we're in no way negated kind of the the uptrend not yet anyway in uh, in the in the pound and we've still got you know the the bullish crossover in the uh, 50 day above the 100 day moving average um, you know we're still kind of you know hitting support within this kind of very wide channel it's not for the faint hearted i would totally agree with that um, but it's uh, you know, it's a nice one to look at because, again, you know, it's a lack of other things. So there you go. We could, uh, but, you know, potentially can kind of extend gains. We're currently running into uh, some key uh, resistance at 154.5, um, and that's kind of stumped the bulls for now. But, again, you know, 153.85, very key key support. Trading in quite a tight range, actually, without too much to do. There is some economic data at 11, which is certainly worth watching out for. Okay, so someone's asked me uh, crude oil. I'm going to take a look at Brent. So my idea, my view on Brent is that we are trading in a range still. As you can see here, 106 to 80-ish, 107 is the upside, and the downside seems to be pretty well protected at 100. So again, it's very, it's not dissimilar to the gold chart because obviously you would expect them to kind of move in lockstep together. Um, you know, they're, they're both commodities, and they're. Um, uh, Lale, I'm only going to look at Brent, I'm afraid. Uh, you can kind of, you know, Brent is a sweet, is quite sweet crude. So we're not oil specialists here. So you're going to have to uh, look around that for yourself. But I'll definitely give you my view on crude, on Brent. As you can see, um, you know, we had dipped as low, uh, below 100. But there's a nice chart pattern there that's show, it suggests recovery. Whenever you get those kind of long, um, long uh, downward Uh, as you can see, now that we've got those kind of long uh, downward um, candle, uh, or when you get the long wicks on the candles, that does just the market's putting in a bit of a low. It doesn't necessarily mean that we're kind of pushing higher, um, or that we're you know we're going to fully retrace this move lower that we've seen over the last few days. Uh, but it does suggest that 100 does seem to be protected on the downside, and we have seemingly hit it three times. So, for when you're trading in this, these kind of rectangle patterns, let me just draw that for you a little bit. Okay, we've broken above it, roughly. Um, but overall, it's kind of held. Um, usually after the, after the third hit, we, we see something. So we could either break to the upside here if we continue to see a recovery in global sentiment, or we could kind of, you know, hit resistance one again, once again at 105 and then get through 100. So it's certainly worth watching for right now. Um, as you can see, um, you know, pretty, um, you know, that's a rectangle, that's a sideways move. What's good about these patterns, and, and if you're trading them, is that you kind of, you, you see the channel. It's very, it's very quick to spot your support and resistance. And as I said, when you, with these rectangle patterns, it's like once, twice, three times. We could push higher again and then bounce low and then go through there once, twice, three times. Usually it's the fourth hit that makes a big difference, that, or that, that you know, is, is significant, whether or not we break out. So uh, currently sideways trading, but there is the potential for a breakout there. So do watch out for, for um, oil. In terms of which way it will go, I think it's quite difficult. Um, the fact that we've been, you know, if the market is in more sustained, sustained recovery, then we could break out to the upside. Opening the way to 106.91, which, of course, is uh, this uh, green 100-day uh, moving average here. And then, you know, you'd be looking at kind of 108.90 or 109 level. The 200-day moving average is, is, uh, is quite if um, resistance there. Um, so we are, by and large, kind of, you know, it's, it's a bit of a waiting game, but at least you know your levels. So that's kind of a nice, uh, nice way to trade that. Okay, I just want to look at uh, Euro. 
and then I will come to Aussie. I know a few of you like looking at Aussie. As you can see with the euro yesterday, what was quite interesting is that we had sharp sell-off again. But as I said, and I mentioned that with the pound as well, the market is respecting the big levels. So it is respecting this kind of cluster of daily moving averages, which come in about 130.80. Um, you know, that certainly is being, it's, it's, it's being respected right now. Um, whether or not it will continue to be, it really will depend on, um, I think, the kind of fundamental data out. Um, there are some Fed speakers later this week. Um, there isn't really any economic data out of the Eurozone. But obviously, at the end of this week, we do have that EU summit. So there's great potential for some big moves. It feels to me like this is a bit like the kind of the calm before the storm, the market respecting the level, respecting these levels. If we get, you know, various bits of fundamental good news, um, fundamental good news, for example, today, maybe stronger U.S. economic data. For me, that would probably be euro negative because it would probably boost the dollar. So then we could retest that 130.80 level, potentially even go through it. Now, in the very short term, as you can see here, uh, 131.20, then 131.80, the 21-day moving average act as a key resistance. Uh, the RSI isn't really telling us too much either. Now, the Aussie, I also wanted to show you. Again, Aussie is also in recovery mode. We would expect that. Um, we would certainly expect that to um, to play uh, to play out. Um, someone's just said, "What time day do your daily candles close?" It's the New York close. That is the time of day that they do. So sorry, that's a, that's a, a sixty minutes. So that was New York close, really. So just looking at the hourlies, um, you know, we are in the Aussie. We are finding a little bit of a uh, of a nice recovery um, after yesterday. Let's take a look at this. Some very very sharp moves in recent days. Um, we had been, you know, sub 92, um, you know, lowest level in kind of three years, uh, but we've picked up from there a little bit, and we were looking very very oversold. So it's no wonder really that we've managed to find a little bit of a recovery. Um, let's just take a quick look as well at the MACD. Um, yeah, and the MACD suggests maybe we just, you know, the, the MACD is certainly supportive of a sideways movement. Um, whether or not we kind of extend this recovery, um, you know, how far can we go? Well, you know, we're quite away from that 21-day moving average. There it comes in just below 95. Um, and for now, anyway, we're, we're seemingly just running into a bit of short-term resistance around about just below 93. Um, we did know, and I did put on our Twitter feed, that there were um, some uh, rumours of some big selling interest around about 93, so short-term uh, selling interest. So that was kind of a, that could, that could certainly be thwarting the bulls right now. Uh, but again, um, you know, people are picking it up on the dips. So when he moved to kind of 92.80, 92.50, oh sorry, 91.80, 90, 91.50 to 80, I should say, uh, is being, is certainly being picked up right now. So if someone's asked me to look at Aussie CAD, I will happily do that. This is a good uh, relative value play. We've seen a nice recovery in Aussie CAD, likewise in Aussie Kiwi as well. Um, uh, but we are about to hit some resistance here at 97.75, currently trading just below 97. That is a 21-day moving average. So a lot of people have been, you know, Aussie, Aussie CAD, you know, diddler, what, which way is it going to go? It's a nice relative value play, I think, and I'm looking for further Aussie weakness relative to the CAD. The CAD should be better protected um, also because it's more leveraged to the U.S., and if the U.S. recovers, that's good news for the CAD. So we think that, you know, there could be some selling interest coming in around about that 97.50 to 75 level, um, which could see us kind of backtrack on this recent recovery. Uh, obviously, the low, uh, the most recent low here comes in just above 95. Um, so if we, can, if we get through there, let's just widen our time frame just a little bit. If we get through here, it kind of opens the way back towards, back towards, um, you know, 90, really, in the, in the very long term. Uh, but certainly kind of worth watching. As you see, Aussie CAD has been really a sideways mover. But as the, you know, market sentiment has, has deteriorated in the last kind of month or so, likewise as, um, as we've seen, you know, some sharp moves lower, um, in overall risk, that has been reflected very much in, uh, in Aussie CAD breaking out of its range and actually declining more sharply. Um, obviously, we have got, you know, we're not necessarily saying that we're going to move. We're quite obviously not moving in a straight line, but I just also want to join, I want to do something here.
yeah, I mean, you know, we're moving into that kind of overbought, short-term overbought area, which could see us retest those, you know, sub-95 lows. Um, so certainly worth uh, worth watching out for that Aussie cat, Aussie cat, I think. Okay, um, the last thing I wanted to look at. Oh no, I just looked at the Aussie. Um, that's kind of it for me. I'm happy to take a question if anyone has one. Has another one. Ray, thank you for keeping me up to date with City AM. I'll have to pick it up. So we've still got three minutes, so I'm happy to just go through something. I just want to show you an interesting chart, just to finish off with, something I put together earlier. Let me just um, redo it really quickly. Interestingly enough, so the FTSE 100 um, has been quite a decliner. Um, and is outpaced, and losses in the FTSE 100 have massively outpaced uh, those from elsewhere, from in say European or, or sorry, in US stock markets. So what we've seen in the last kind of two weeks is that the relationship between gold and the FTSE 100 has got really, really, really close. So gold has moved with, uh, or, or the FTSE has moved alongside gold 70% of the time over the last two weeks. At the beginning of the year, there was no correlation at all. So that's a huge increase, right? What does that why is that significant? Because there's a lot of mining miners, gold miners in particular, in the in the FTSE index. So as the gold prices drop, price drops, it is no surprise that that mining sector is coming under a huge amount of pressure, uh, which is then kind of weighing on the on the FTSE. Now, obviously, the FTSE is coming under under other pressure as well. Um, you know, fears about China and Fed tapering is affecting banks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's a large financial uh, make up in the FTSE, but I did think that was quite interesting. That just that in dramatic increase in the correlation there, um, certainly worth watching. But basically, what it means is if you're trading the FTSE, take a quick look at gold. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it from me. As I said, like you know, there's one minute left. So if you've got a quick question, do do write one very quickly. Dollar CAD, uh, yeah, CAD's been an interesting one, right? Uh, you know, it's had a big shoot higher. Uh, Pam, good to see, good to hear from you. Big shoot higher here. Let me just get rid of this. 105 does seem to be though where we are reversing. So certainly in the short term, uh, we are we do seem to be uh, you know 105 to 10550 does seem to be uh, falling quite sharply. Um, I will just bear with one moment. Um, so dollar can basically we think any pullbacks probably are going to be slightly temporary. Uh, we still think that the trajectory for dollar CAD is higher. Um, just looking at it from a slightly longer term perspective, 107 would probably be. Um, you know, the key thing um, to watch for, uh, news out this afternoon. There is some Euro, uh, U.S. data out this afternoon. Um, in terms of Canadian data, uh, there's nothing much, but there is some U.S. economic data which could push this higher um, if there's good economic news from from uh, from Canada. So do watch out for that. Um, but in terms of... Um, Uh, kind of where we are right now. Oh, what is this? This is dollar card. Great. As you can see, we just kind of pushed lower there. Um, just pulled back. This is a 60-minute chart. Really pulled back from that 105.50 highs. But as you can see, you know, 104.50 is acting as very good support. Euro and gold. Euro and gold, there is a bit of a correlation. I'll just do the chart really quickly, and then we'll have to wrap this up. Um, but there is, a, there is a correlation because also, remember, euro is moved by, by, by the dollar, and so is gold. So that's kind of the key thing there. Take a look at it. There is a rough correlation. You know, they kind of sometimes peak-ish at the same time, but not really. Uh, but they've both been declining together for sure. The correlation has picked up, picked up last week with gold moving with euro, but overall a very insignificant correlation. Okay, everyone, thank you so much for joining. Uh, please do join us next week for more, and uh, good luck trading this week. So thank you.